Hey, peace world. Thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind sports and entertainment video. My name is Wood. Gonna get into a little bit of bite down boxing. Um, just continuing to monitor what's going on. You've heard probably that the, the trilogy fight with Wilder and uh, Tyson Fury has has likely been uh, postponed into early October. I want to say October 3rd was the date, uh, which, you know, impacts a lot of things. And as some of these larger fights get rescheduled into the second half of the year, um, you know, how does this, how does this impact the cost to watch all this to, uh, you know, for viewers? So, and then how do we, you know, in, in, a, in a fight like that, we wonder how that, uh, you know, impacts the potential matchup with the winner of uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder 3 uh, to, uh, you know, a Joshua, uh, Anthony Joshua, if he's successful in getting past uh, Pulev, Kubrat Pulev. So it'll be interesting to see how all of these, uh, you know, dominoes continue to fall and, and how uh, what the ripple effect is and so on and so forth. Another bit of information that's out there, <clears throat> kind of a big fight, especially on the women's side. The biggest fight, uh, arguably the biggest fight to be made is, um, and this thing, you know, this thing won't go away, but a potential matchup between Clarissa Shields and uh, Layla Ali. You know, I, I haven't been in favor of this in some regards, but as I mentioned a couple of videos ago, it does seem like discussions are happening so uh Clarissa Shields was on uh the the Fight Nation uh daily boxing show the Akin Barak show and gave us an or provided an update on that fight even though the an undisputed fight at junior middleweight or super welterweight with Mar with Canada's Marie Eve Dicker is uh is that's been postponed. That's what she was on the show to uh, talk about was that's been moved back uh, with no no date that has been rescheduled to at this time. So then the, the conversation moved over to uh, what's going on with Layla Ali. And I just thought this was interesting because it's hearing some numbers, you know, from directly from, you know, the individual that's involved with the fight. So a qu couple of quick notes. There have been discussions between the two camps because Clarissa confirmed that uh, someone from her team had been in touch with um, Layla Ali's lawyer or attorney or whatever. That's that was the phrase that uh, Layla, I mean that Clarissa used. Uh, secondly, I mentioned this on the earlier video, but Layla Ali wants to be one of her demands is to be the A side. And this is an absolute deal breaker for Clarissa Shields. That's out of her mouth. Uh, she does not want to uh, proceed with this with uh, Layla Ali as the A-side. Secondly, my third note. Uh, Shields g gave an update on uh, communication with the investor that she previously mentioned as being, uh, you know, as back in this fight, as putting up the money for this fight. And they've kind of pulled back. They let her know that uh, for for the investor to make some money, that five hundred thousand buys would need to be would, would they would need to see five hundred thousand buys of the pay per view for them to walk away with some money. So I guess that's not actually a break even. Uh, you know, that's a break even plus some amount of. Uh, you know, of profit. And this is very concerning. This is important to me because trying to gauge where women's boxing is, uh, it's a lot of money that was thrown around on this thing. Um, and then, you know, what? There's there hasn't been a female a women's uh, pay-per-view in boxing of late. So, you know, what would be the price point of that pay-per-view? Would it be $75 keeping in track you know, tracking along with the men 
or would it be, you know, $45? You know, I don't know. I'm not even trying to throw a number out there on what's reasonable. Uh, I just, I've just been wondering how could they get this fight done and how, how could the money uh, be right to satisfy all parties? So 500,000 views, which we already know, like no men are doing, you know, no men headed cards or, or uh, pay-per-views with men aren't out here doing 500,000. So that would suggest to me there's no way that they could do this at $75. Would $45 be a target? And then, you know, does that still get you to $500,000? I believe on this last card against uh, Ivana Habazin, I want to say the rating, her, uh, her, her viewing numbers dropped. Clarissa Shields' viewing numbers dropped on that fight. Now, it was a couple of things that could have uh, contributed to that. Nobody knew who Habazin was. The fight was delayed uh, multiple times and so on and so forth. But um, so that was one interesting thing. To, and then also along with the pay-per-view situation, I guess Layla Ali did a pay-per-view back in the day. And the investor said that uh, it only did about 100,000 views. So how do you make up that gap, you know, between the two of them? And Layla not being hot in the boxing world and not having any numbers to look at right now. Um, how do you close that gap? You know, 100,000 plus Clarissa's popularity to get to 500,000 buys. Uh, and then secondly, on this pay-per-view note, Clarissa Shields has obviously never been on a pay-per-view other than participating on, I believe, the Ward, the Kovalev Ward first uh, card. I'll get back to that in just a second. Also... Uh, Cl Clarissa Shields mentioned uh, another issue is Shields is a proponent of the winner receiving more than the loser in this fight. You know that Layla came out here and said she wanted either 10 M's or 5 M's. Well, she said 5 or 10 to get her inspired, get her motivated to go through a training camp to come down and wait and, and take this thing seriously. Um... I told you from my first video on this that these numbers seem, they don't even seem uh, feasible. You know, who's going to pay them five and ten million dollars? The best, you know, the best smaller men out here aren't even getting that guaranteed. So that kind of had this matchup in jeopardy for me from the, you know, from the outset. But Clarissa says, you know, for I think for some examples she threw around was, you know, let her get the let the winner get seven, which would be her because she she expects to win. She said, "Let her get seven, and then you know maybe I mean maybe Layla Ali could get five or three million, whatever you know they're able to split up." Um, but again, like I said, you know Layla threw it out there that her her demand or expectation was you know was five to ten. So these numbers are all over the place, and it kind of gives you an idea that there's quite a bit of work to be put together. Uh, Clarissa also wanted Layla to come out and announce or clarify that she's coming, that she is coming out of retirement, you know, to, to move this thing along in terms of generating buzz. Uh, the last note that I had was Shields, um, uh, Shields. Oh, so Ock and Barack actually pushed back and I thought this was, I thought this was a good line of questioning here and this was keeping it a buck. Barack asked uh, Shields about accepting lower money to earn her biggest payday. Like maybe you don't make more than her in this matchup, but it still is going to be, it still would be your biggest payday. And it'd be that by a mile. Uh, also, I chimed in and asked, well, how many fights versus other women would you need to make for this one potential fight with, uh, you know, with Layla Ali? And Shields came back and said, well, that's that's that doesn't matter. You know, she, she's not giving up the A side status. And then the money isn't that important to her because of the fact that she's done well with her money to this point. And uh, she wouldn't have to, uh, you know, and for lack of a better word, she wouldn't have to sell her soul for this fight because she doesn't need it that much. You know, she doesn't need it that badly to, to make those compromises. 
So uh, just some um, other notes here. You know, Shields revealed that she picked up 300 thousand for her first fight i mean for her last fight against Hab habison and the one against the one that's uh pending against marie eve dicker is scheduled she's scheduled to make like or set to make about 500k for that one this is interesting because we see what showtime what their commitment is to her or uh salita promotions we see what uh you know the commitment is financially to her and that's a fight that was being targeted back up in Flint at the Dort Federal uh, Credit Union uh, Center. So uh, that's interesting to see how they're growing with her and and, and uh, continuing to to uh, help this thing along in terms of uh, women's boxing. And then we know that what a rising tide, you know, helps all lifts all ships. So if uh, Clarissa's numbers continue to go up, then other women fighters out there could conceivably demand more money or start to demand more money. Um, and then lastly, Shields also noted that um, she she actually earned 50K for that fight that I just mentioned on the, uh, the Kovalev Ward 1 card. She actually earned 50K for her first four-rounder, which was her debut fight against uh, Franchon Cruz Desern. Uh And along with that, you know, one of the other topics that she touched on while she was on there was what's going on or how she would advise the uh, the Olympic hopefuls who now see uh, for those of them that wanted or, you know, who had plans of turning pro after the games. And now that's all delayed. She said, you know, you might want to think about her advice would be to someone like Bruce Carrington or Keyshawn Davis. Uh, her advice was. Finishing that process and meddling, especially if you're able to achieve a gold medal or win a gold medal, could help with your, uh, you know, your starting point for your professional, uh, you know, compensation. So uh, with her being a two time gold medalist, that helped that played a part in her commanding that 50K. And, uh, you know, these guys could go pro being uh, impatient. Uh, you know, being impatient and whatnot and could make that move and maybe start out with these first fights, you know, being for five thousand or eight thousand dollars or something. So uh, that was kind of her contribution to that whole uh, discussion right there. And, and that development with the Olympics, the uh, 2020 uh, Tokyo Games being pushed back to 2021. Um, so that's just some things to consider. I'd be very interested to know, uh, you know, what anybody's thoughts are on these, this fight, the potential fight with uh, Clarissa Shields and Layla Ali. Um, again, I've I've talked about this, the, these these uh, these money demands, uh, you know, by both women. Like I said, I mentioned in the last one, this would be like a sixteen or almost a seventeen hundred percent. Uh, you know, increase in 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 uh in Clarissa's purse, you know, to go from that three hundred thousand to go to five million, I believe was the number that I used. But um, I just like I said, man, I'm just interested to see how this thing gets done, whether it can get done, and if it does get done, starting from uh Layla Ali's ask of five to ten million, what does that actually uh result? You know, what is that final? What is the final number? Which, like I said, could be one point something, two point something uh, in all reality. Because um, I'm wondering, you know, where do they hold this? Do people travel to it? Do fans travel to it? And do people buy the pay-per-view? And what does that card look like? You know, if, if they have these types of, of salaries, what other uh, fights could be put on the card to sweeten the pot for uh, potential, uh, you know, viewers and, and pay-per-view buyers? So, like I said, man, I don't even know if this thing is possible. And it seems like if Layla Ali, you know, sticks to her guns, um, it sounds like Clay, uh, uh, Clarissa is comfortable with just letting this thing pass on by. So, like I said, man, I don't know who's all interested in this. I'm just... Uh, kind of carrying on the discussion and, and would be 
uh, very interested to hear any feedback and, and thoughts to any, because I see plenty of, um, it's, if you watch the Instagram posts or the, uh, you know, social media period and what, uh, Clarissa is putting out there, it does seem like it's, um, you know, some, it's, it's a, it's an appeal to this fight. So, uh, and that's what Clarissa's biggest thing is now is like, we need to separate or her insistence is that Muhammad Ali's popularity be separated from whatever Layla Ali's popularity is and that there be a lot of compromise uh, because, you know, Clarissa insists and believes that she, and, and I mean, and all, that's probably something we can say facts to is she is the one that's, um, you know, driving uh, the women's game right now. So, um, like I said, man, I'm just interested to see if this thing uh, progresses any, and if we there is an actual, um, you know, fight down and down the road. Again, this is pay me no mind. A little bit of bite down boxing being discussed. Don't let them count you out, and then keep it in mind. Even as we come out the other side of this COVID nineteen season, which should even be more uh, of an impetus right now, is that uh, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. One.